While the British deployed a strong tank force during World War I led by their Mark tanks, the Germans lagged behind and hadn't been concerned about building one of their own. Still, a prototype was soon commissioned, and the A7V Panzer became the first ever German tank to go into combat. Its sophisticated technology supposedly prevailed over that of the British tanks, but it's said that German soldiers preferred their captured Mark IVs over their own vehicles. Catching up. By the time the British Mark I tank was launched halfway through World War I, the Germans were several steps behind in land ship technology. Whereas the British had effectively deployed the first tank, known as Little Willie, the German general staff was not amused by the concept. Still, the design and development of the first German tank began within a month, and a committee under the auspices of the General War Department Section 7 Transportation was formed to investigate the new technology. The A7V was named after the German acronym for Abteilung 7, Verkehrswesen, its parent organization, and it was catalogued as Sturmpanzerwagen, or Armored Assault Vehicle. The project to design and build the tank was assigned to Joseph Vollmer, one of the best automobile designers in the country. The request called for a weight of roughly 30 tons, the ability to cross one and a half meter ditches, a top speed of 12 kilometers per hour, and an armament of cannons at the front and rear, as well as several machine guns. Its running gear was based on the American Holt tractor, which was itself based on examples borrowed from the Austro-Hungarian army. The initial plans were shared with the army by December, and the design was stretched to perform as a tank and an unarmored carrier by using a universal chassis. Finally, on April 30th, 1917, the first prototype was finished at Berlin Marienfelder by Daimler Motoring Gesellschaft. Pre-production model. In September of 1917, the first pre-production model was completed. Its appearance was like an armored box on tracks, though packed with weaponry. The armor plate measured 30 millimeters in the front, 20 millimeters in the sides, and 10 millimeters in the roof. However, the steel was not hardened armor plate, rendering it vulnerable to large caliber rounds, but still enough to stop machine gun and rifle fire. Two centrally mounted Daimler four-cylinder petrol engines with 101 horsepower provided the necessary push to carry the 24-foot-long, 10-foot-wide, 11-foot-high tank at a top speed of 15 kilometers per hour on roads and 5 kilometers per hour across the country. The vehicle carried 500 liters of fuel. Equipped for a crew of 18, the 33-ton Colossus required 10 more men than its British counterpart to maneuver. It had six MG-08 machine guns and required two men to operate each, while two more men were in charge of the front 57mm Maxim Nordenfeldt cannon. Ironically, many of these cannons were of British origin and had been captured in Belgium earlier in the war, while others were from Russia. The remainder of the crew included the driver, the signaler, the mechanic, and the commanding officer. The A7Vs would sometimes go into action with as many as 25 men on board. As for ammunition, the first Panzer tank carried around 50 cartridge belts for the machine guns, totaling 10 to 15,000 rounds. While 180 shells were carried officially, the tank would actually stow up to 300 rounds for combat. However, the rear cannon had been removed during the final design. Comparisons. The first production model was ready by October, and both tanks were handed over to the recently formed Assault Tank Units 1 and 2, both of which amounted to a couple hundred officers and soldiers, eager to begin training. The A7V had an advantage over the British tanks, its individually sprung 24-wheel suspension. Consequently, the tank had crossed trenches of up to 2.1 meters wide and had a ground clearance of 190 to 400 millimeters. The German tank was a promising invention but it had its disadvantages, too. Compared to its contemporaries, it had a high road speed, but it performed poorly off-road. Its high center of gravity made it prone to either getting stuck, or worse, overturning on steep slopes 
and leaving its underside exposed. What's more, its considerable overhang at the front added to its low ground clearance, rendering muddy areas and trenches impassable. Also, the driver had a 10-meter blind spot, as the view was covered by the hull. Ultimately, the A7B Panzer performed well in open terrains and offered more firepower than other available armored cars. Despite its superior quality and mechanical sophistication compared to the British tanks, the constant refinement would eventually undermine its production. Out of the hundred tanks initially ordered, only twenty were built. In contrast, the United Kingdom and France participated with thousands of tanks during the war. In fact, forty German captured British Mark IVs prevailed within their ranks, and it's widely believed that the Germans preferred the British tanks over their own. First Tank Clash By early 1918, the A7V already showed troubling signs. On March 21st, five tanks were deployed north of the St. Quentin Canal, out of which three broke down even before entering combat. Still, the two remaining tanks helped stop a mild British breakthrough. The first tank versus tank encounter would take place a month later near vievre when three A7Vs ran into three Mark IVs. Two of the British tanks were females and only carried machine guns, while the other was male and was fitted with two six-pounder guns. Both female tanks were damaged by the German armor-piercing bullets, and their machine guns didn't do much damage to the enemy tanks. Meanwhile, the male tank attacked the lead German A7V with its cannon three times and knocked it out. The tank was set ablaze and toppled into a shell hole while the crew fled on foot. The guns of the Mark IV then aimed at the remaining two A7Vs, but they withdrew from action. The awkward engagement was enlightening for both sides, which would use the information while designing more modern tanks and planning tactics. Eighteen A7Vs survived the war, but most were scrapped following the armistice. The only surviving A7V exemplar, number 506, known as Mephisto in honor of its fiery decoration, was recovered in 1919 and taken as a trophy by the Australian Army. It's currently on display at the Queensland Museum in Southbank. A running replica is part of the Tank Museum in Bovington, United Kingdom, while the Deutsches Panzermuseum in Munster, Germany holds a static replica. The A7V would only be the beginning of a legacy of powerful machinery, as the nation would eventually become a world leader in tank design. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channels for more information and stories about the great inventions of the world wars. And hit the like button and let us know in the comments below whether you think the A7V was a better tank than the Mark IV.